Hey guys, let's try a problem that introduces a concept we haven't seen yet. We want to use a cutting tool that lives in this force vector field. And the idea is to move it to a point that's three meters to the right and three meters up from its initial location. The question is, what's the easiest way to do it? Should we move the tool along a diagonal path, like mentioned in part A, or should we move it in a series of two steps, as in part B? In part C, we'll address that question and see how it fits into the idea of what a conservative force is. Before calculating anything, let's get a sense of what this vector field looks like. Since the force only has a negative j component, all of our vectors will point in the negative y direction. Notice that if we start at some positive constant value of y, like y is equal to 1 here, and we move in the plus x direction, the force on the tool increases linearly, as represented by the size of the arrows. On the other hand, if we start at some positive constant value of x and move in the plus y direction, the force on the tool increases exponentially instead. We'll have to keep that in mind as we're investigating our paths. Let's start with the diagonal one in part A. We'll begin at the origin and then move directly over to point 3, 3. Here's how we'll calculate the work. Since we're told that y is equal to x along this diagonal path, we can make an adjustment to our force expression. Let's replace x with y, then simplify it to negative alpha y cubed. This way, we can integrate it with respect to y, which is in the same direction that the force acts. The limits of integration will be from y is equal to 0 to y is equal to 3 meters. And you can factor out this negative alpha, if you like, since it's a constant and it doesn't depend on any value of y. If we use the power rule for integration here, we'll get the following. And all we have to do is plug in the numbers and get our result. With that, part A is complete. And now we can investigate the other path and see if things are any different. Remember, first we're moving three meters to the right along y is equal to zero, then three meters up along x is equal to three. We'll have to break the work done by this vector field into two parts since x and y are not always the same along this path. Let's start with the work done along the x direction. Here's our field again, and notice that as we increase x, we're keeping y at zero. And anything multiplied by zero is still zero, so that means the work done in the x direction is going to look like this, which will integrate to just zero. What about in the y direction? Well, x is a constant three meters, and we're increasing y from zero up till three. So the result will definitely be a non-zero number. We can start by factoring out negative alpha again, and since x is constant along this path, at least in the second part, that can be factored out too, like this. Again, we can apply the power rule of integration and get a fairly simple expression, then plug in some numbers. Notice that we have three meters cubed multiplied by another three meters. So if you like, you can rewrite it as three meters to the fourth power. 
Not necessary, but it looks nice. Our result is non-zero, as expected. But it's also different from what we got in part A. Let's try and explain this for part C. The definition of a conservative force is rather detailed, and there are some parts of it that we don't need to worry about in this problem. So instead, we only need to answer yes to the following two questions to determine if the force in this problem is conservative. One, do both paths start and end in the same spots? Well, yes, they do. They both start at the origin and they both end at the point three, three. So that requirement is fulfilled. Two, is the work the same for both paths? No, it isn't. As we saw in part A and B, if we take the diagonal path, the magnitude of the force acting on the tool is smaller than what it would experience taking the other path. Since we can't answer yes to both of those questions, therefore, we say that this force is non-conservative. We'll see how the requirements of a conservative force will become more elaborate with future problems. But for now, this is all we need. As always, thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.